what is up? It is Astro Leah KB9 LFC back at it again. This time we're in the shop, the ham shack, a whole new portion you probably haven't seen before because tech issues, my fault completely. I forgot things, which let's be honest, it happens a lot. So today we are going to be building the DX Commander Light. This is video number dos. So if you haven't seen the first part, uh, I recommend you go check it out. All we did was we cut the wires for the DX Commander elements and radials, and we went ahead and we soldered them all onto the fork connector so they'd be all ready for assembly today. So today, as I promised, I'm going to be showing you how to build the DX Commander Light with some wonderful shaky cam footage. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to be using my G90 as an antenna. Uh, antenna sweeper. So I'll be able to see the SWR along different portions of the band. And that will tell me how well the antenna is doing, if it's a little long, if it's a little short. So without any further ado, I hope you enjoy the video and let's get building. Okay, so here is the assembled, uh, the assembled antenna. All the way from the bottom to the very top. Lovely shaky cam footage here. So you can see at the bottom, here's where the radials get attached to the bottom plate. You unscrew this bottom black piece, which you can see I'm unscrewing right here, and that's how you slip the bottom plate on. All of the other plates get slid on from the top down and they sit at the respective pole sections that are the right thickness for them. So I have all five of them attached here. So five bundles of six, the 30, oh, <laughs> there's the chicken again. So the 30 radials, when you're done, those are going to get, and the antenna spread up out, you're, those are all going to go along the bottom. Here you can see this is the next plate up. This is where all of the um, elements themselves are attached. So I have my 20, my 40, which goes up and back down. That's the black clip you can see there. And the 15 meters. That's also where the um, the SO239 attaches to the bottom plate. This is the plate for the guy wires. It's the first plate along the pole, the first plastic plate. And you can see I have all four of my wires going through there. Nah, I went a little too far there. A little, a little bit back. Um, here is where you can see, I'm gonna use the 15 meters for a bit of an example. Um, this is, you can see the, uh, the element, which I folded over at the end, wrapped around with electrical tape. And then I have the doingy doingy cord attached to the Jubilee clip. I'll explain how the Jubilee clips work in a minute. You want the elements to be tight enough that they're not flapping around, but not tight enough that you're bending the other half of the pole over. And this is where the, uh, this is the 20 meters that I'm looking at right now. The 20 meters and the 15 meters both attached to that uh, to that plastic plate right there. The 40 meter goes all the way up to the top. I made a mistake with the 40 meters. Um, I didn't do the top bit quite correctly. I'd already measured out the shot cord at that point, so I did just put a little bit of a zip tie there. Quick fix, it works. Um, it fits in, in when you collapse the pole. So nothing crazy there. Um, just a bit of a quick solution to my problem. My problem of chickens. There's a lot of them. <laughs> so yes, uh, the Jubilee clips, what you get is the little black cylinder at the bottom. You're gonna pull your cord through, tie a knot, and then uh, pull the knot down till it's inside the cylinder. And then the clip itself has two little hooks on the outside and they go into the black cylinder around the edge right there. And that's how they sort of clip together. Um, so yeah, not too hard. All you do is you slide all the plates down and then you connect all of the elements. Um, 40 meter element was the hardest. You can see it goes up and then back down. It came down to about the first second M in the DX Commander. This one, you're just gonna, um, he gives a couple different measurements. Just cut it until you get to um, where you want the SWR and which portion of the band you want that there. So I did a one-to-one -one in the voice portion of the band because that's where I'm gonna be using it. And um, so I just kept cutting until I got 
where I want it. Here's the better view of the SO239. It attaches from the bottom plate to the top plate. So when you're disconnecting the whole thing, you're gonna undo that wing nut and that's what's gonna keep it in place. On the back of that connector, there's a little bit of, um, oh God, what's it called? Like a nut and that's what's gonna screw onto the back there and keep the connector in place. So yeah, that is basically what is up with the antenna. Again, super easy for the fork connectors. You're just gonna put them in and tighten it down with wing nuts. Do that for all the fork connectors, do that for all of the elements. So first step is going to be extend the pole. Second step, put all your plates on. And okay, third step is going to be attach all of your elements, attach all of the radials. And then fourth step is going to be going through and attaching all of the bungee cord. If you haven't built it before, you're gonna to have to go through and do the bungee cord and the Jubilee clips for the first time and measure those out to where you're gonna need them. Other than that, pretty simple, pretty standard. Okay, here we are. I got the antenna built for the first time. This is the G90 and I'm using my BioNO battery. If you press down the power button on the G90, it takes you to that antenna sweeping. Um, the antenna sweeping screen. And basically what that's doing is it is making a little graph for you there of what the SWR is along that frequency range that is where you are on the band. And simplified, basically it's just seeing how good your antenna is doing. You want that line, that yellow line, to be as close to one-to-one -one as you can. This is actually me doing the antenna sweeping for the first time. This is after I just built it with the basic measurements that I cut with the wires and soldered everything together. And it actually worked really well. So you saw me test um, 15 meters. Now I'm testing 20 meters. And 20 meters is just as good as 15 meters. And you can see it's one to one pretty much the entire way, which I cannot tell you how happy that made me because I did not want to do little finicky cuts here and there because the way it is when you are uh, sort of trimming your antenna is little almost there, little almost there, little almost there, and then it's too much. 40 meters, you can see here, this is the preliminary test. I did have to do some trimming. That's because I wasn't quite sure uh, how long that was going to be, so I cut it long and then I just trimmed it and trimmed it and trimmed it. But little by little, I got that SWR down and um, it definitely, it was, it didn't take too long, but it was, it was a little bit of a finicky process. So I just kept retesting it and until I got it where I wanted it. If you do CW, you may want it one to one lower down on the band, but my CW needs practice and I mainly use voice. So I wanted to get it to be one to one about about the voice portion of the band on all three of them. And the chicken did too. Chicken's very interested in Poda. And yep, just just keep trimming, just keep trimming and you will get there in the end. And I did. Okay, so here is the final scanning for each band that I have set up. Here is 40 meters. You can see I did get it one-to-one -one right along that voice portion where I wanted it. Here is 20 meters, also one-to-one -one along that voice portion where I wanted it. Those are the two I use most often. And then I also got 15 meters to be one-to-one -one, um, as well. So all three, all three elements ended up working out perfectly. I got the, um, the SWR to be amazing on all of them and I am super excited about that. So here you can see the finished antenna from my little makeshift setup I had to actually putting it together with the guy wires and all the radials spread out on the ground and 
it worked. It worked amazing. I got to make some contacts and I am really happy with the way it turned out. Okay, so I think this is probably like the most disjointed recording, non-recording video I've done with a voiceover and it's taken me like a month. But here we are, we made it to the outro. Actually, the outro is happening, at least for me, before most of the any the rest of the stuff. But here we are with the outro. I still can't make eye contact with the camera lens. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Um, so yeah, my data commander is working perfectly. I'm so super, super excited about that. I did make a couple test contacts. And the next step is going to be doing a POTA activation with everything that Mike K at MRD Radio stuff gave to me in his Him for a video. So thank you to the DX Commander, obviously. Thank you to Mike. And yeah, like, comment, and of course, subscribe if you want to see some more videos because they will be coming out. And you probably, most probably, will not want to miss me having a lot of fun with Ham Radio and probably breaking things because it's what I do best. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, 7 3